Hello and welcome, it's Brittany here from Orchard Corset and I'm gonna show you how to dye your corset. Now, this is not something I do very often. I'm a very inexperienced crafter um, and I am very clumsy, so this should be a really entertaining video. But I assure you, this is a DIY that even the most inexperienced Magoo can do. Now, what you're gonna need for this is a safe workspace, first and foremost. You wanna make sure that nobody's gonna come and accidentally bump your stuff, a pet, a child, something like that because we are gonna have quite a lot of hot water and it needs to sit and hang out and be safe for as long as you decide uh, your color is where you would like it to be. Uh, what you'll also need to get is the fabric dye of your choice. Now I went with RIT dye. Um, it's a dye I've used before so I'm comfortable using it, but also they had this teal color that is so perfectly orchard corset, I just couldn't resist. So I chose this lighter teal color um, and I already pre-measured the ingredients that I'll need according to the manufacturer's instructions, which is something that you really need to do. Follow all of their instructions regarding uh, how long you keep it in there for, how much water you use, the dye, and any extra additives. The only thing I will say, I did not add the salt that they wanted. They wanted to have quite a lot of salt in this, and I just thought that was a little too abrasive for the corset, and since it's not something that can be machine washed anyways, I didn't feel the need to have the color be fully set. I did, however, add the dish detergent that they asked you to do, so that is something I'm going to add. Uh, so we need our corsets, we need our dye, any extra additives that your dye manufacturers may request. Um, a whisk to stir all of your dye up into the water and make sure that you don't have any dye sitting in the water in kind of like a little pocket. Um, and then something to stir your corsets with as well. Um, and yeah, and then just time and patience. This is a project um, and it is something that you kind of just need to go into because you are just gonna throw a corset into water. It does seem a little scary, but I assure you, if you let your corset fully dry before you put it back on, your corset is going to be fine. Corset is made with stainless steel boning. Very, very safe and tough. We're not throwing this in the machine, so it's not gonna get jostled around. It's really just gonna soak, sit, and then fully dry out, and that's it. So it's really going to be quite secure. So I'm gonna show you. Uh, this is what we're gonna start with. We have the white mesh, and then we have the white satin. So. Um, that's what these are gonna start out as, and this is what they're gonna end up as. These sat in the teal dye with the added uh, dish detergent for one full hour in the hot pot of water. You can see that the white cotton mesh took it just really, really beautifully. I'll put them side by side so you guys can see the color comparison. It's a really nice color. If you've been a fan of ours for a while, you may remember we've had some corsets that were actually really similarly colored to this. I was looking at them before prepping for this video and just thinking how close they look to some limited editions we've had in the past. Um, and then this uh, is the white satin. Now this is the exact same color dye. Uh, and they sat in the dye for the exact same amount of time with the exact same amount of uh, detergent and all of that jazz. Uh, but you can see that the mesh took the dye color a little bit more vividly and more bold than the satin did. The satin really kind of looks more like a, like a Cinderella blue a little bit. However, if you notice, the uh, cotton on the inside definitely absorbed that color really, really strongly. So it's actually kind of a cool effect, I think, to have the lining be a little bit darker, but just be aware that's perfectly expected because this outside is a man-made fabric and this is that cotton that's really gonna suck up all of that material. So another tip that I have for you uh, is in regards to the pot that you use. So I am using a large lidded pot that's big enough for both of my corsets to move freely. That's a really important detail they have on the back of this manufacturer's instructions and so I made sure to follow that. But you may not have a pot that's quite big enough or maybe you're trying to dye like an overbust which is quite a lot bigger than these standard and waspy length corsets that I'm using. So what you could do is use a large heat safe bowl. Uh, so I used this when I was dyeing another corset and I just placed it in our sink and then I covered the hot water with tin foil just to make sure that it stayed warm um, while it was soaking and it worked just as well. You could do the same effect even if you plugged your uh, kitchen sink or that uh, laundry room sink that you were using. So another thing, you really need to take out your laces before you do this. You do not want to bother with all of those. It's going to make it really awkward and you're not going to be able to stir all of this in here. Uh, so take out your laces so you're really just left with the corset. Um, and we're going to next, we're going to add in all of our additives, give it a good stir, and then we're going to throw them in. I've already heated up this water um, and I'm keeping it from boiling, um, but I, it is quite hot um, right now. Uh, it, 
the manufacturer calls for you to use the hottest uh, water uh, possible, um, but don't boil it. That's not necessary here. So you can see, quite warm. And now I'm gonna add in my dish soap and the measured out uh, dye that I am using. It's the same amount that I used for these to make sure that they match. So, dye. There's no course that's in here right now. So I'm just gonna make sure everything gets in here and we give it a good stir because I don't want any um, little pockets of dye to be hanging out in the water. I wanna make sure that the corsets get dyed as evenly as possible. Okay, stir. Okay, that should be good. Now, we're gonna put our corsets in. So I just put my corsets in and the top of one of mine is just kind of poking out. So I heated up some more water. I just want it to cover my corsets completely. Um, I had to do this when I did them before as well. And I just want to be extra sure that there is no white corset poking out of this hot water. Again, I'm just going to give it a good little stir, you know, every few minutes, um, every 10, 15 minutes or so, because we're making sure that the corsets and the dye do not settle down at the bottom. Um, so now my corset is not poking out anymore. Just make sure he doesn't try to settle up. We are good. So I am going to look at the clock um, to make sure that I keep an eye on the time. We don't want to get distracted here. And every 15 minutes, I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to stir it. And I'm going to leave these here for one solid hour. And then I'm going to let them uh, fully dry after I rinse them according to the instructions and we'll get to see uh, how fabulous they look. While we're waiting for the corsets to dye, I just wanted to talk with you guys about a few other things. So when I was pre-dyeing uh, those other halves of the corsets, I also took it upon myself to dye a beige mesh. I wasn't entirely sure how the beige mesh would absorb this lighter, uh, kind of dusty teal color that I used for my corsets, but I wanted to see if it was able to absorb it. Um, it wasn't very successful, but I still wanted to show you all just so you could get a picture of what it would look like if you chose a lighter shade over something like the beige mesh or beige cotton. This is what it started out as, this kind of uh, beachy sand color. Um, and this is what I ended up with. Um, and this is the exact same teal shade. And this beige mesh actually sat in the dye for about six hours, whereas those others only sat in there for about an hour. Uh, this one just took a lot longer to absorb. And I thought that was really relevant for you all to know that. So just pick the right color dye for the right color corset that you have to be the most successful. And then another thing I wanted to show you all is I also dyed some garter straps. So if you don't know, we sell garter extensions uh, in white or black and then in four and six inches available in six packs. Garter extensions actually take dye pretty well. Uh, they're cotton right here. This is like cotton elastic, uh, nice and stretchy, really strong. Um, I just tossed these in the same time with my corsets and they took a really beautiful color, as you can see. Um, and it matches the uh, cotton mesh quite nicely. Um, it's a really fun kind of contrasting color, I think, with the pale. Uh, but you can see that the cotton mesh, you know, it definitely absorbed it uh, better, just like this elastic cotton did. Uh, so that's another option. And again, you would just follow the manufacturer's instructions for rinsing uh, and then drying these fully. But those, of course, would dry much faster than a corset would. So my timer just went off. It's been an hour. And I am going to rinse off my corsets uh, fully, um, including the soap as per recommended by the manufacturer. And then I'm going to let them air dry. So let's go do that. So now I am going to rinse my corsets according to the dye manufacturer's instructions. Now, Gloves may be a good idea here, but I'm a bit of a rule breaker and I like to just, you know, safely use my hands. So I'm just dumping them right in the sink. And then now I am going to give them a good rinse um, and uh, a, a little soap uh, according to the manufacturer's instructions. Um, just a little bit of uh, dish soap and just run over it um, is a really great way to make sure that you get all that excess dye off of there. So, Literally, just taking these in my hands and I'm giving it a little scrub. We're gonna make sure that these are fully rinsed, so it's okay that I'm doing this right now. It's just so very pretty. 
And I love how differently the, dif the fabrics absorb the color. Okay. So I'm looking here to make sure that there's no color coming off, which there isn't. There wasn't even when I took it right out. Um, there's no color, there's no, nothing bleeding or leaking or anything like that. So they are good. So once there are no bubbles anymore, then I'm going to let them drip dry in my sink for a little while, uh, just to make sure that I don't make a mess when I go to move them. giving a gentle squeeze. I'm not bending the bones when I'm doing this. I'm really just giving the fabric a little bit of a squeeze to get that excess water out of there so it can drip dry quick, more quickly. I'm just gonna lay them over my sink for just a few minutes. This isn't where I'm going to store them to dry. I just want them to get all of the dripping water out. So let's just let them hang out for a little bit and we'll be back. All right, so our corset is just drip drying. I've already rinsed it off according to the manufacturer's instructions. And here in just a sec, when I'm finished talking with you, I'm going to take it down to our laundry room and just hang it up so it can completely air dry. It's really important that it fully air dries. And so just let it dry until it really is completely dry. A little longer is not a bad thing. So it could be about a day, maybe a little bit longer depending on the humidity in your area. And I hope that you found this video really helpful. I've had a lot of fun with you guys today. If you guys do do any DIYs, please tag us. We love seeing your creative art and how you use our corsets in your everyday life. So please just use hashtag Orchard Corset and uh, tag us on social anywhere that you are. And we hope to see you again. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.